Hey guys, I'm Brandon with Mojiform, and today we'll be looking at browser organization in Revit. Browser organization is a essential part of working with Revit. You have to go through the project browser to find your files. And the fact is we use so many files and so many different views that it can often get quite confusing. Well, in this course today, we'll look at the built-in tools that Revit has to organizing your browser. And we'll also look at how to get some productivity at the end of the video so you stay tuned to the end so you can get that. Also some resources to help you as you organize your project browsers and your Revit projects. So I'm going to collapse all and just go to my cover sheet. And you'll see that right now these are the built-in project browser settings. You click on views and I've actually added these because you typically will see the different titles but you can actually change this I'm gonna right click over views and category and there's a button browse organization and as I click on this we get to this browse organization dialog and it tells you different ways you can organize your drawings so now I'm going to click discipline and these are actually all architectural I didn't change any of the disciplines for these so if I right click and click um, the type and discipline. It'll make that as a subcategory. So that's uh, one way to develop that. Now, one thing I wanted to make unique was by making a category feature. And the way I did it was I just added this as a new family and I just changed what was sorted and grouped. So I'm gonna actually do that with a new one so you can see how it was done. And I'll just name this as um, classification. So all you need to do is make that new item there. And here we don't yet have classification. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK here. And we're not currently organized by that way. And that's because this actually is going to be a project parameter. And so I added category here. I'm going to now add a now a new text feature. Um, and it's going to be called classification. And this is going to affect the views. So as you can see, the categories can be for any of the families. But these are going to go into our views. So it's going to be added as a tag in each of the view families and now all I need to click on is uh, and text is also fine uh, actually going to be grouped under views um, but this is fine for what we're doing and uh, I just want to take a look at those and press OK and you can press OK for the parameter value um, and we just leave it blank for most of the values now we press OK so now that I've pressed this, I can go to my browser organization and I'll click classification. And since they're all the same classification, you're not going to see a difference. So I'm going to edit this. So I'm going to put classification first, and then I'm going to put view, um, let me see here. We're going to put the type. So we're just going to see what that is. And we can look at the other views to see what those are, but we're going to just focus on this right now. So I'm, I'm organizing by classification and type. I press OK. So right now, they're all the same classification. But these are the types. So now if I go to, for instance, uh, this first floor plan, and I scroll down in the properties, you notice that it does have classification right here it's, it's text under view and the reason why you can't edit it is because it is uh, currently with a template so we're actually gonna just to make it simple we're gonna go to one of the drawings that doesn't have a template and we'll go here to this and we'll see where we can change the classification and it's listed as a text. It could have been placed in the identity data. We're actually thinking we want to change that. But now you can see that now I have two categories. 
So someone could say the classification could be a date. The classification could be a anything you want. So I could put schematic set. And now the classification is schematic set and just regular. Now if I go back to browser organization, I really could just simply come into classification and actually sort by the type first and then by classification. And whereas before it was even, if you press OK, and press OK here. Now what we can see is when we click on the floor plans, now we have a subgroup under floor plan of schematic set. And if we go back to project parameters and we click on um, classification, we'll know that we can actually uh, change this location here. So right now it's under text. We actually could put it under identity data and that might go where a lot of other information is being about the project. So we press that OK there. And so now when I click on a drawing like floor plan, I can see under identity data, scroll down, the classification. And so um, the view template actually can change. If you click on the view template, you actually can choose this value right here. So you can either make it to be included in the template categories or it can be a custom item. So I'm going to click off for this included. So now you can choose the classification per drawing. So now if I scroll down to classification, I can simply classify here. So now we have something called DD set and schematic set. And that was the same way that I used to make the classification that I wanted to use first of category. But you can make multiple ones and you can organize your drawing however you want. And so this is a critical way to start to organize what your drawings are organized within the model. For working with your sheet set, there's another level of browser organization. So now we'll go to our sheets and we'll right click and there's also another browser organization uh, check mark. Now you can actually uh, organize your sheets in a similar way. Right now I'm organizing by a sheet prefix. So you'll see that what that entails is I have it organized by the sheet number and the first two characters. So if I put the first character and I press OK, we'll come down and look at our our sets and we see the first item. Now if I go to browser organization and I click edit and I go to group and sorting and I use the first three characters, I press OK. You'll see it organized by the first three characters. And there are some other organization methods including um, drawn by, now they're all drawn by the same person. So uh, there's some various ways that you can organize this. I like sheet free pricks because I get to put the different categories together. The perfect browser organization for your project will take time, but using these built-in Revit tools, it can help finding and organizing your project so much more easy. Here are some productivity tips to help you get the most out of your browser organization for your Revit projects each time. Number one, you want to separate your working drawing from your presentation drawings. Pretty much that means you're going to be working with different little categories for working and for presentation. That also includes if someone is working with the project with you, that each one can have their own individual working files, preferably with their nickname or their um, initials in front. You can also separate different things for schematic design, design development, you know, design project phase one, you know, set, separate those into different higher groups. So you'll be dividing your drawings as opposed to working on everything at the same time. Um, also, you want to periodically clean your browser. That means that you need to organize things where they need to be, you need to delete things that need not to be there. Doing that regularly will keep your project nice and organized, just like a clean room, you could say. Uh, next, you definitely want to make sure that you're archiving your project when there's ever anything that's changed, anything that's moved around. You can always go back and look at a previous project. Um, that's a useful thing. 
Uh, and finally, you definitely want to utilize that collapse all and the search functions within your project browsers so that you can be making sure you're working on one part of your project at a time. Uh, even if you have several drop drawings open, you know, going back and forth is a regular part of the project life, but having that clear collapse all uh, when you're not using them, it's going to help you focus. And having an understanding and organized project is easier to understand in your head and so it'll be actually easier to work with and get to what you need faster. A little thought and good organization can make your Revit workflow much more smooth and the tips and techniques we discussed here will help you get better results. Thanks for joining me. This is Brandon with MotionForm. Comment if you have any questions and check my links if you need any help with Revit. I'd love to help you master your Revit skills. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to the MotionForm channel for more helpful content for designers and architects.